Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. The fourth overall pick at the NHL entry draft has been used to select some pretty great hockey players over the years. Whether it's current stars like Alex Petrangelo and Nicholas Backstrom, rising talents like Mitch Marner and Kale McCarr, or even Hall of Famers like Larry Murphy, Ron Francis and Paul Correa, teams that hold the fourth choice at the event can often pick up quite the talented player. Being selected with such a high pick, and being regarded as one of the top players of your age group, can provide plenty of opportunity to get your NHL career off to a good start, but it comes with some pretty lofty expectations too. After all, if you can't become an undisputed superstar, or even a legitimate player in the league in the few years after your selection, you could not only be seen as a disappointment or a bust, you could be regarded as one of the worst picks of your class, or even the history of the draft. However, one player taken at this position would be remembered, but for all the wrong reasons. This is the story of Griffin Reinhardt, from fourth overall to China. In order to tell this rather disappointing tale, allow me to take you back to April 30th, 2009, when 15-year-old defenseman Griffin Reinhardt was selected third overall in the WHL's Bantam Draft by the Edmonton Oil Kings. After posting 34 points in 32 games with the Vancouver Giants under-18 team during the 09-10 season, Reinhardt would join the Oil Kings roster for a brief two-game stint to conclude the year, before officially making the jump to the WHL for the 10-11 season. Once he was in the major junior system full-time, the Canadian defenseman would show exactly why he was touted so high by so many, as he put up 18 goals and 61 points in 103 WHL games over the next two seasons. Reinhardt's 36-point performance during his draft year in 11-12 also helped Edmonton to book a place in the WHL playoffs, where the defenseman's contribution was a little less impressive as he scored 8 points in 20 games. However, this production was enough to help the Oil Kings defeat the Portland Winterhawks in seven games to clinch the 2012 WHL Playoff Championship. Reinhardt's recent championship and his play over the last few seasons was considered so impressive that he had garnered quite a lot of interest for the upcoming NHL draft. For example, Matthias Strozjek of Elite Prospects had this to say about Reinhardt in 2011, quote, a large defenseman with solid skills at both ends of the ice, a strong player with room for improvement in his physical game, defensively sound, gives a good first pass and skates well considering his large frame. Not a flashy player, but provides good all-round talent and is capable of handling big minutes. Sentiments felt by many scouts and general managers across the NHL. In fact, Griffin's abilities on the ice had seen him ranked as one of the top prospects in the entire draft class, as he was pegged to go somewhere in the top 10, or even the top 5. These predictions would finally be proven right on June 22nd, 2012, as Griffin Reinhardt would be selected 4th overall at the 2012 NHL Entry Draft by the New York Islanders. So after establishing himself as a reliable blue liner in the juniors, who could develop into a top 4 D-man at the NHL level, Griffin Reinhardt would be selected as the 4th best player of his age group in the entire hockey world. Though he would receive this incredible honour, the Canadian defenseman had a long way to go before he would suit up in the best league in the world. After his selection at the draft, Reinhardt would return to the Edmonton Oil Kings roster and spend the next two seasons of his career refining his overall game in the juniors as an overager. Though he would remain a defensively sound player and an important piece of Edmonton's roster, the Canadian defenseman was unable to take the next step in his offensive side of the game. In fact, Reinhardt would score at a slightly reduced rate than his pre-draft years, as he notched 12 goals and 50 points in 104 games. Despite this noticeable drop in his numbers, Reinhardt was still a force to be reckoned with in the major junior circuit, especially during the 13-14 season, where he helped Edmonton lift both the WHL Playoff Championship and even the 2014 Memorial Cup. Not only that, the former fourth overall pick would also receive several individual awards too, such as a WHL Playoff MVP in 2014 and a second team All-Star nod. So although he had taken a step back in one area of his game, Reinhardt had continued to make great strides forward in other areas and was recognised as one of the best prospects in Western Canada. 
Once the 13-14 season had concluded, Reinhardt was too old to return to the Oil Kings for the upcoming year and had nothing left to prove at the junior level, so he turned pro and looked to crack the New York Islanders roster. After a successful training camp with the team, Reinhardt would receive the news he was hoping for. He had made the cut and would be on the Islanders' opening night roster for the 14-15 NHL season. On October 10th, 2014, Griffin Reinhardt would don the blue and orange jersey of the Islanders for the very first time and take to the ice in his NHL debut as New York visited the Carolina Hurricanes. Though he would get plenty of opportunities to make an impact in the opening game of his NHL career since he played 16 minutes and 51 seconds of ice time, the former fourth overall pick was unable to record a single number on the stat sheet, as the Islanders took a 5-3 win over Carolina. Despite his quiet debut, Reinhardt would get the opportunity to stick around the Islanders' lineup for the next two games of the season, which were a home game against the Hurricanes and an away game against the New York Rangers. However, after registering just a single shot on goal, two penalty minutes and a minus two in those trio of games, the Canadian defenseman would be demoted to the AHL's Bridgeport Sound Tigers. Once down in the minors, Reinhardt would join the Sound Tigers roster for the next six weeks and become a key player for the team by regaining his confidence, his on-ice rhythm, and his scoring touch. This improvement in his play led to Reinhardt being recalled to the Islanders roster on December 4th, where he was given another chance to earn a full-time spot in the NHL as he travelled with the team to take on the Ottawa Senators. In fact, Reinhardt would end up spending the next five games of the season with New York and was able to register his first NHL point on December 9th with an assist against the Minnesota Wild. Unfortunately though, this lone point would be his only contribution on the score sheet during his second stint in the bigs, as Reinhardt was sent back down to Bridgeport on December 15th following a game against the New Jersey Devils. Having returned to the Sound Tigers once again, Reinhardt would end up spending the rest of the year with the team, finishing the 14-15 season with 7 goals and 22 points in 59 AHL games. He did get to play in a single playoff game for the Islanders that year too, but he failed to put any points on the board and was a minus 2, so the less we talk about it, the better. So after his first season of pro hockey, Griffin Reinhardt had suited up in eight NHL games where he had recorded a single point, a plus one, six penalty minutes and four shots on goal. Not exactly what you're hoping for from your fourth overall pick, but hey, Reinhardt was still only 21 years old and showed all the makings of being a solid blue liner in the league for many years to come. However, it wouldn't be with New York. On June 26, 2015, it was announced that the Islanders had traded Reinhardt to the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for the 16th and 33rd overall picks of the 2015 draft. This meant that Reinhardt's career would be heading north of the border once more, and he would get the chance to compete for a spot on an NHL roster in a city where he had produced so much success during his years in the juniors. Unfortunately for both Reinhardt and the Oilers, though, things wouldn't work out the way that either of them would hope. The 15-16 season would see Reinhardt impress Edmonton's coaching staff out of training camp and earn a spot on the team's opening night roster on October 8th against the St. Louis Blues. Though his abilities and potential gave him the chance to force his way onto the roster and even push for a spot in the top four if he played well enough, the Canadian defenseman was once again unable to find any consistency at the NHL level. In fact, Reinhardt spent the entire season bouncing between the Oilers and the AHL's Bakersfield Condors, never finding a permanent place on either team's roster. The problem was, Reinhardt played well enough at the minor league level to be given a shot at the bigs, but when he was up there, he was never able to make an impact and was sent back down to the minors, where the cycle then repeated itself. By the end of the year, Reinhardt had scored 2 goals and 10 points in 30 AHL games, but had scored just a single point in 29 NHL games, recording an assist against the Nashville Predators on January 23rd. So in his sophomore stint in the best league in the world, this former 4th overall draft pick had posted a single point, a minus 6, 2 penalty minutes and 24 shots in 29 NHL games. Clearly this wasn't great, but so what, right? Reinhardt was still only 22 years old, and besides, defensemen frequently take more time to become NHL ready than forwards do. 
he still had plenty of time to live up to his potential and become a dominant player in the best league in the world. Would he though? Well... The 16-17 season would see Reinhardt have his worst start to a season since his pro career began, as he was unable to find a place on the Oilers' opening night roster out of training camp. Instead, the former fourth overall pick would begin the year in Bakersfield and look to impress the Oilers' front office in the hopes of getting another shot in the bigs. Unfortunately though, this call-up would never come, as Reinhardt spent the entirety of the season in the AHL, where he scored 7 goals and 21 points in 54 games. He did suit up for the Oilers during the 2017 playoffs though, but he played in just a single game and notched a lone assist, as Edmonton were eliminated in the second round by the Anaheim Ducks. At least he scored a point though, right? Having spent the past two seasons in the Oilers organisation, and having failed to become a mainstay on an NHL roster, let alone a productive player in the league, Edmonton's patience had all but ran out. Luckily for them though, a unique opportunity gave them the chance to move on from their disappointing defenceman. On June 21st, 2017, it was announced that the league's newest franchise, the Vegas Golden Knights, had selected Griffin Reinhardt during the 2017 NHL expansion draft, meaning Reinhardt was moving to his third NHL team in just four seasons. On the surface, this acquisition seemed to be a match made in heaven for both parties. After all, Vegas acquired a player in his early 20s with a chip on his shoulder who could still develop into a decent NHL player, whilst Reinhardt was getting a fresh start in a new city and had the opportunity to earn a more permanent place in the league on a brand new team. However... Vegas's gamble would soon leave both sides bust. Once he had joined the Golden Knights organization, Reinhardt would once again begin the season down in the AHL, this time with Vegas's minor league affiliate, the Chicago Wolves. Though he had hoped to work his way back into the NHL and finally earn a full-time spot in the bigs, the Canadian defenseman would fail to receive a call-up once again, instead spending the next two seasons with the Wolves, where he scored just 6 goals and 28 points in 135 AHL games. In fact, Reinhardt would never get to suit up in a Golden Knights jersey during his entire tenure with the franchise, meaning his lone playoff game with the Oilers back in 2017 would be the final NHL game of his career to date. So the fourth overall pick of the 2012 NHL entry draft, a guy that was deemed one of the top players of his age group across the entire hockey world, suited up in 37 NHL games over two seasons, where he scored a grand total of two points. Two points in 37 NHL games from a fourth overall pick. Yep, this guy was a bust all right. Oh, and if that wasn't bad enough, the 16th overall pick that the Oilers gave to the Islanders in the trade was used to select forward Matthew Barzell, who won the Calder Memorial Trophy for Rookie of the Year in 2017 and has become one of, if not New York's best player over the last three seasons. So the Oilers got two seasons of a mediocre Reinhardt before letting him get picked up for free in the expansion draft, while the Islanders got a Rookie of the Year and their most productive player since John Tavares. Talk about pouring salt into an open wound. Now I think it's pretty obvious to say that Reinhardt failed to live up to the hype and expectations that come with being a top 5 pick at the draft, but the question is why? Why was he unable to become the player so many teams and scouts expected him to be? Well if you want the short answer, he simply wasn't able to adjust his game to the NHL level and struggled to match up against the best players in the world. But if you want the longer answer, let's take another look at the scouting report that I mentioned earlier and see if we can pinpoint a few answers. So firstly, it was claimed that Reinhardt was a large defenseman with solid skills at both ends of the ice. Well at 6 foot 4 and 212 pounds, it's true that Reinhardt is a very large defenseman. But whilst he did have solid skills at both ends of the ice during his years in the juniors and the minors, he never really showcased those skills at the NHL level. Whether the competition he was facing made it too difficult for him, he was trying to play it too safe as he didn't want to make a mistake, or he never found the right opportunity to show off his talents, Reinhardt simply wasn't as good as he was expected to be when he was playing in the league. Next, he was described as a strong player with room for improvement in his physical game. Now I will say that Reinhardt wasn't the worst player physically during his time in the NHL. I mean, he wasn't the best, but he certainly wasn't the worst. 
During his 37 games in the league, Reinhardt recorded 76 hits, according to HockeyReference.com, so that's roughly two hits a game on average. However, considering he's six foot four and 212 pounds, you really want to see a guy like Reinhardt throw the body a lot more than he actually did. It's such a great element of his game that could have opened up other opportunities to showcase his skills, but it kind of remained as untapped potential during his stint in the bigs and ultimately went to waste. Penultimately, the claim that he was defensively sound, which also didn't quite come to fruition at the NHL level. I mean, the guy finished with a minus 5 and 26 penalty minutes in 37 games. If anything, he often hindered his team more than he actually helped them. If he was able to put points on the board or score at a decent pace, then maybe these deficiencies in his defense could have been somewhat overlooked. But his offensive side of the game was just as disappointing as his defense, if not more, since he only scored two points in 37 games. So he stuck out on both sides of the ice for all the wrong reasons. And lastly, he is described as being capable of handling big minutes. Now, whilst this may have been the case at other points during his development, Griffin Reinhardt could not handle big minutes in the NHL. In the eight games he played over 20 minutes of ice time during his NHL career, Reinhardt recorded a negative plus minus in five of them, with a positive plus minus in just one game and an even zero in two games. Of course, plus minus isn't a perfect stat to measure a player's effectiveness, and all those eight games were with the Edmonton Oilers during the 15-16 season, who weren't exactly a President's Trophy candidate that year, but Reinhardt was a member of that roster for much of the season too. He contributed to the mediocrity almost as much as anyone else. So to summarise, Griffin Reinhardt didn't make it to the NHL long term, as he wasn't able to showcase his offensive skills at the NHL level, he was okay physically but nothing special, he was disappointing defensively, and he couldn't handle big minutes without allowing a goal or two into the back of his own net. Now I may have been a little harsh in some of my criticisms there, but when you're the fourth overall pick of your draft class, the expectations to perform are sky high, so anything less than the best simply isn't good enough. As far as I'm aware, Reinhardt never seemed to struggle with any major injuries or have some terrible off-ice baggage to deal with, so you could make the argument that there's not really any excuse as to why he didn't pan out. To be honest, Griffin's fourth overall selection seems to have been more of a curse than a blessing for him. After all, if he was taken later in the first round, or even deeper in the draft, then his career not quite panning out would have been far less frustrating and kind of understandable. But being taken as the fourth best player of your age group means that you should not only become a regular on an NHL roster, you're expected to be one of the best players in the world at least several years into your pro career. A lofty pedestal that Reinhardt simply couldn't achieve during his time in the NHL. But regardless of how or why things ended up the way they did, Reinhardt's NHL career ultimately didn't go the way it was supposed to. However, that doesn't mean he was done playing hockey just yet. After his two seasons with the Chicago Wolves, Griffin Reinhardt would leave Vegas' organization behind and looked for another team to give him a chance to return to the NHL for the 1920 season. When no team expressed serious interest in adding a 25-year-old defenseman who had been on the decline over the last few seasons, Reinhardt decided to take his talents across the pond. However, instead of joining the Finnish Liga, the Swedish Hockey League, or even the Swiss National League, the Canadian defenseman signed a one-year contract with Kunlun Red Star of the KHL. So having spent his entire junior and pro career in North America up until that point, Griffin Reinhardt made the move to China in the hopes of getting his career back on track. Unfortunately, Reinhardt's time in Beijing wouldn't go much better than his last few years back home. In fact, it went far worse, as the Canadian defenseman scored just two points in 33 KHL games, his worst single-season production since turning pro six years ago. Once the 1920 season came to an end, Kunlun, quite understandably, had no interest in bringing Reinhardt back for the following season. With no other KHL team, or any other franchise in the hockey world, expressing interest in signing him either, Reinhardt is still listed as an unrestricted free agent to this very day. So just eight years after being taken with the fourth overall draft pick, Griffin Reinhardt is essentially homeless in the hockey world. 
Now, the good news is that many of Europe's domestic leagues still have a few weeks to go before they kick off their 2021 seasons at the time of this recording, so there is still a chance that Reinhardt can find a home and suit up with a team for the upcoming season. However, will he find a team interested in him given his minimal production and questionable play over the last few seasons? I guess we'll have to wait and see, folks. Though he produced an impressive career in the juniors and was considered one of the top players of his age group at the time of the draft, Griffin Reinhardt was unable to earn a spot in the league long term thanks to his game never quite developing or adjusting to the NHL level. To be honest, seeing such a steep fall from grace isn't really that funny, it's just kinda sad. Obviously, he was given plenty of opportunities to make an impact and become a key player on an NHL roster, but I can't help but feel for the guy a little. I mean, he had the weight of the hockey world on his shoulders to become the guy that everybody expected him to be, but he simply couldn't live up to the hype, no matter how hard he tried. Here's hoping Reinhardt can bounce back and carve out a decent second half of his career either in North America's minor leagues or overseas in Europe. He sure could do with some good news for a change, eh folks? And that's the story of Griffin Reinhardt's journey from 4th overall to China. What do you guys think about Reinhardt's career so far? Do you think he can bounce back and be more successful over the next few years, or do you think his time as a pro hockey player is all but over? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Chris Gadsby, Connor B, John Plomin, Jordan Whitehead, Martin Tolnus, Paul Malia, Roman from London, The Legacy, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.